The idea of the Flash and the reason why I say it was the best idea operated by the wrong people mm -hmm. is they said, let's come on and let's be an alternative, but let's play 80s pop music that 91X no longer played because they were really focused on what was popular. And then when we were playing new artists, we were trying to find... Uh, a, I was the music director. I wasn't the program director. Okay. Uh, were, you, were you on the air? Yeah, uh, I was on the air, but I only did uh, weekends, and then I did um, the show Backstage Pass, mm -hmm. and then I did a new music show called Flash Forward. Okay. So I did that too. Um, but I was the marketing director as well, so I had a lot of hats. What you did at 91X, you kind of took it over to the Flash. Uh, I did, and they didn't like that at all. <laughs> That's a whole other story. <laughs> we'll do another show on yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> the legalities of radio. No. Um, so I went over there, and I did this, and, and we had this completely different attitude, and we mm. called it Pop Alternative. That was mm. what we – we didn't say that on the air, but that's what we – if someone said, you know, what's the Flash? What's the format? Well, it's Pop Alternative. It's all the pop stuff that 91X mm. won't play anymore. Halloran said the, the name Flash came from – from the word flashback um it was a little bit of that um and the program director uh, we won't get into him too much sherman um, was a fan of flash gordon so was it sherman? It was a, yeah sherman cohen uh rest his soul i suppose yeah. but anyways um he, that's why i said it was the right idea done by the wrong people because he really had no clue about it. I, I i met him once i, I hate to digress into this yeah. but i will for just a minute <laughs> when we launched the format um we literally went and bought cds we didn't. We didn't take a. <laughs> Sounds was, like quad. You, you couldn't just take a feed, <laughs> right. and you, you you had to actually. You know, we were still playing CDs then. You know, it mm -hmm. wasn't uh, computerized then, and we were trying to be as secretive as possible about it because we didn't want the word to get out what we were doing. So we literally went the weekend before we launched and bought like five hundred CDs, and I had the roughest time in Tower Records. Yep, us too. Bar. That's where we was <laughs> arguing with. Sherman Cohen about things like he would say like oh oingo boingo we'll play weird science I'm like oh no we got to play Dead Man's Party yeah. we got to play Only Aladdin we got to play oh El no 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 Elevator Man according to my <laughs> charts here the only national hit here is Weird Science and I'd be like dude Boingo was like one of the biggest bands in San Diego let me show you I pictures. Bet of 18,000 seats in Irvine yeah. and selling out everywhere they played here. Trust me. Yeah. You know, the number one song for 91X 1986 was Dead, Man Par Dead okay. Man's Party. So so we had these arguments <laughs> that lasted for two years till they fired me. Did you win so, those no, arguments? No, no. Well, I won the arguments, but I lost the job. <laughs> <laughs> I did get my way, but eventually I got the door. So that, that's, that is true. But you had the last laugh in a way because you were right. I was, I was right. That way. And, and, and when I left that job, I, um, I moved on to my next job, which was actually the my most fulfilling job that I ever had, which was the PD of uh, KCXX X1039 in San Bernardino, because mm. finally it was mine. Okay. Which uh, I know you know this well. Whenever you're in the ranks, you're always looking around going, ah, not so much with Max. Mm -hmm. I had supreme confidence in Max. The way Max ran 91X, in anything, he, I trusted him. I totally trusted him. He was but, democratic, right? Well, no, no, he was, uh, no, he was a total Nazi. Everything was his way. <laughs> no, no. <let's, laughs> but, but he really knew what he was talking about. Okay. He really knew where he was going. He had a vision. He knew what he wanted for that station, and he showed that when he went to WFNX in Boston. He mm -hmm. made that tiny station very successful. Mm -hmm. So I had total confidence in him. But the two PDs after that, eh, not so much. So anyways... <laughs> <laughs> so, who will remain yeah, nameless? Well, no, I mean, no, I'm no, kidding. It's not, not a big I'm deal. kidding. I mean, it's uh, you know, I would say the, the guy that followed um, uh, Max, and I, I don't mind saying it was Trip Reeb, and, and mm -hmm. Trip Reeb is not a bad guy, but Trip Reeb was he was a general manager. He ended up going to K Rock as a GM. He, yeah, he even said when he was there, he's like, "Here, I'm here to run the station. I'm not here to run the music." So. So oh, that sounds like what focus. what he said to me when I interviewed him for the 91X PD position in 2007. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get the gig, of course, <laughs> but he said to me, I, and this is why I never wanted to work in radio again. He was my, my final guy I was going to go to, you know. <laughs> he said, we're not here to create pop culture. We're here to reflect it. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you know yeah. firsthand... <laughs> where that transition came and why there was some diminishing returns on that. But, um, uh, but when the flash was doing its thing, um, just to circle back to that for a second, I just, the, the new music we were playing was new sort of alternative music that 91 X wouldn't touch like Sarah McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. Sarah McLaughlin didn't get played on top 40 radio when she came out, there was no place for her to go. It suddenly it was like, boom, she was, she was the star of our Christmas show. 
And three mm-hmm. months later, 91X was playing Sarah McLaughlin. Wow. So, so it was a lot of the, you know, they were, the, the radio war was really, really intense. To let you know, I played her. I was one of the first 10 PDs in America because she's from Canada uh, to play her. And that was in 92, Into the Fire. Oh, very so nice. So she did a show very for us. Very nice. Very, she's awesome. She's yeah, awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We, did, we did one fantastic Christmas show when I was at The Flash. Uh, that she was the headline for, and I'm trying to remember some of the other bands. Uh, the Beat Farmers, of course, were because they were they did a lot of stuff with us. Yeah. Uh, country, the late Country Dick would come in with our morning show all the time. And he awesome, was just amazing. <laughs> I, I'm sure you've heard the the Ten Days of Christmas that he did. I have and a bushel of jingle berries. <laughs> oh, it was amazing. I have it on tape somewhere. I do. Awesome. I have everything on tape, by the way. The entire <laughs> last you mean 15 cassette? years. Cassette, reel to reel, dat. Yeah. Oh, oh I love dats, but there's no oh, more dat players. Oh, no, yeah, no. I'm, <laughs> I've, I've been digitizing a lot of that. Um, Do you have a I'm dat player? I don't. Oh, um, I need to find someone who does. I have a bunch of dats, and they're worthless until I find a dat player. Yeah, I might. We might have one in the studio uh, up in Temecula, which is, mm. by the way, just for a second, where I work now. I don't know if we mentioned yeah. that. I work at Radio 94.5 KMYT in Temecula, which you can get with the iHeartRadio app mm-hmm. if you put in the letters KMYT. Okay. <laughs> That's my little plug and for you're, now because I'm the still mor- working. You're the morning man. I'm there. just the morning guy. Okay. I am not the program director. I am not... Uh, an official title other than that. Do you do a morning show solo or do you have a little team of No, I do people? I do a morning show and it's called More Music in the Morning, thank goodness, because I focus mm. on the music. Right I play more music than anybody else. Mm. The, uh, it's I, about time there's a morning show that actually plays some music. It, it, I it, hate these morning shows that have zero songs. <laughs> <laughs> They're are, awful. You should listen. We are the alternative to that. So, oh, cool. So we keep, Woo. my breaks are, you know, never more than two minutes long. Nice. Um, <clears throat> most of the stuff I do is focused towards what we're doing, which is music. And we are, as far as I know, um, not to like jump completely around here, but uh, as far as I know, we're the only AAA format left in California, mm, yeah. and I'm hearing bad things about the what, format. What about 94.9 in San Diego? Well, they're alternative. They're straight up alt. Okay. They report I thought, alternative. I, I thought they were AAA. Huh? Well, they're poppy. What a little about, more popular than 91 X. What about K Fog in San Francisco? Um, I thought they changed formats. I. Well, I don't I'll, I'll double check. Yeah, on we all should that. check yeah. on that. But I mean, there's 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 been an attrition of there. There used to be a great AAA here in San Diego that was that their last call letters were KPRI. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. They my went favorite away. station for a while. They long went time. away about about three, three or, years ago. Yeah. The religious station bottom. Yes, was but I yes. went up to one of their pr- promotions once, and I was just walking. I love to walk, and so I um, walked up to uh, in Escondido, a little mall there uh, on Valley Parkway, and. Um, I saw their van. You know, their van's very recognizable, the white and kind of aqua blue thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. uh, I walked up, and I, I figured, what are they doing here? And they were giving out free pizza, and it was for some... They had a band playing, but there were only, like, ten people there. So I started talking with Haley Jones for, like, five... Or, I'm sorry, about a half hour. And um, we talked radio and stuff, but... It was like 10 of us there. <laughs> and I, I thought, like, <laughs> this is a radio promotion. Like, I, I do remember Quad having those kind of things as car washes. No one would show up. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I did a promotion, um, probably the most frustrating one. Do you remember a band called The Y Store? Yes, they yes. They did a song called Lack of Water. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't last long. But they were really good. And I remember having to do this was one of the times when I was at KCXX, uh, X1039. And um, it was a sales driven promotion mm-hmm. and we literally did a show on the lawn on the corner outside of a Brugger's Bagels with the band mm-hmm. and there was 10 people sitting there wow. <laughs> so it was like oh man oh. well but, you know, you know just... they did a thing with us too they came did an in studio the Y store yeah acoustic performance and so I got to know them you know they, we became buds but just for one weekend you know yeah they, <laughs> they were they were super nice guys there yeah. and there has been a lot of artists too that I have um, long-standing relationships with. You know, I still talk with Dave Wakeling all the time. Oh, cool. From the English Beat. Yeah. Uh, I introduced him mm. once at a show in Sacramento. Did you? Yeah. yeah. No, I, he, I, uh, here's a quick story from the KCXX days. I had, uh, when we were doing our Christmas shows up there, which is the end of the era of the massive 10-band Christmas shows, um, and we had a band cancel at the last minute. Dishwalla was the band. Mm, okay. um, the singer had um, laryngitis. Uh, he literally did, and they actually did a make good show for us a few months later. So it was wow. really nice. Um, but that day they canceled. They're like he can't. There's no way his, his voice is screwed. So I literally called Dave Wakeling at home, and I'm like, I got one slot. And he goes, What time should I be there, boss? <laughs> and he came out and played the show. It was like the coolest thing ever. He was he so lived great. in San Diego. He lives in Dana Point. Still. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. in he's between southern, L.A. and San Diego. Yeah. He's nice a, place. He's a Southern California boy. Yeah. So, and uh, still friends with uh, Mike Peters from the Alarm. He's coming back around this summer. Cool. I love the um, Alarm. 
he actually um, he came out when I was at KCXX and at a really strange time, which I didn't know until it was till after this time came. But in the late nineties, I don't know if you, he was di- diagnosed with a, a lymphoma mm. cancer, and he thought he was going to die. He thought he was going to be terminal. So he went around and he visited some of the radio folks that he had been friends with. And I've been, I interviewed uh, The Alarm in 1983. It was the first time. Wow. First time they came I out. met him in 89. He's an amazing guy. Just yeah. the, ni- the sweetest guy in the world. He is so nice and he's so in it for the right reasons. He so loves, loves what he does and loves yeah. making me available. He's, I root for him forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, I, unbeknownst to me, he was doing this sort of tour. He had no album out, but he was visiting radio stations and he was hanging out. And I didn't know at the time. It's because he thought he was going to die. Mm. So he came by and he stayed in San Bernardino for three days. And he came in and he did like our midday show one day as a guest and our morning show. And I had him on the Sunday night show. And he just came in and played and did and just talked about music and how much he loved it and bands that he liked. It was this great thing. And then he went off and I found out later that he had been diagnosed. And he thought that was his goodbye tour, but he didn't want to tell everyone like, I'm, you know, mm. I'm going to die. I want to yeah. talk. It, he didn't want it to be that sort of thing. Right. And then, of course, we know from history that he went into remission and he has done fabulously since then. Great. And now he has that Love, Hope, Strength organization, which is all about um, swabbing for uh, donors, for cancer patients, stuff like that. He does cool. that on, on everything. And he's actually doing a show out in uh, where my radio station is in Wine Country on July 25th, mm. along with Modern English. Right and on. Gene Loves Jezebel. Cool. I've seen them. So you, we're kind of talking now about uh, San Bernardino. I've always considered that market riverside but is it officially san bernardino well it, it's there's uh, the area is called the inland empire the radio yes, market right. riverside san bernardino is the in, inland empire the the northern part of the signal that counts is northern san bernardino and it goes all the way south to temecula mm-hmm. uh, and we did cover all that area um so you know riverside san bernardino about the same size uh we we did promotions in redlands we did promotions in temecula you know we did the balloon and wine festival way back then when it first started so we we covered all of the Inland Empire. And you were PD of KCXX. I was OMPD yeah. and marketing director. Um, I worked, I did the Sunday night music meeting, I did backstage pass. Uh, I wore a lot of hats there, yeah. But I wanted to, because I finally got a chance where, you know, my general manager was not the greatest of guys, but he did give me the keys. So, uh, what years were you there? Started in 95 and left right at the very end of 99. Okay. Let so. me tell you a quick story. You already know this story, but you and I both worked for the same owner, yes. Willie Davis. Yes. Except they were different companies. There was All Pro, what, down here? And then, All Pro, yeah. And then where I was, it was called Milwaukee Radio Alliance. Mm-hmm. And um, it was funny. He hired me, um, <clears throat> and um, the goal was to somehow wind up back at San Bernardino. You know, I don't know what. He was thinking about you. You were going to take my job. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I already knew you, and I thought you were cool, and I I honestly didn't know why they were talking to me other than they – first they wanted me to go to Milwaukee, you know, to fix that broken station because mm-hmm. it had low ratings mm-hmm. and uh, consistently low, like, like, but not so low that it was terrible. Mm-hmm. But um, So they wanted me to duplicate what I had done at Quad in Sacramento. Now, that's what Willie wanted. Mm-hmm. But when I got to Milwaukee, they, it was a whole different world. They didn't really care what Willie wanted. See, and right. So I only lasted there like six months, and they ran me out. They fired me. But when I threatened, um, you know, they, they better give me my severance check. As I'm in California, you got to hand someone the severance right, check. Right, right. They, they weren't going to do that. They're going to wait months or something. Yeah, we'll have it for you. I go, no, you're not. You just broke the contract that we set up. This is going to be 18 months. Mm. You guys blew it. Um, so give me the check now. Otherwise, I'll take you to court. They came up with a check within 15 minutes. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? They also went along with my other demand. Let me say that I quit instead of you fired me because mm. at the time I was writing for VA magazine virtually oh. alternative and I just didn't want you know the industry a lot of people PDs across the industry knew who I was as a writer oh, yeah. and I just didn't want to go out like that right. you know as a 
total fired loser, even though <laughs> it, they were the losers for breaking the freaking contract. <laughs> Anyway, well, there there were some nice people there, though. Yeah, and 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 you probably were being groomed to take my job, <laughs> and and not it certainly wasn't because I wasn't doing a good job because we you had good you know, ratings. My first year, we tripled the ratings. Yeah. We went from a one share to a three two. We went from eighteenth in the market to sixth, and we had the smallest signal of the top ten stations. So we did really well. 